All right, I want to thank you all for joining us, and I want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors for the National Eagle Center. Uh, my name is Tiffany Plone. I am the Avian Care Manager for the National Eagle Center, and today I will be doing a presentation called One Determined Eagle. This is Angel's story. Angel is our oldest ambassador here at the National Eagle Center. She is 22 years old. We do celebrate our birds' birthdays on Earth Day, and that is because everyone, when you are an eagle, hatches in the springtime. And so Angel, like I said, is 22 years old. She came to the National Eagle Center in the year 1999, and she actually was a part of our original building on Main Street here in lovely Wabasha, Minnesota. Now, Angel is with us because she does have a permanent injury. Now, all the birds that do live at the National Eagle Center have some sort of reason why they cannot survive out in the wild. Now, we are not a wildlife rehabilitation center. We do not take in any injured wildlife whatsoever. All of our birds were injured in different parts of the country, brought to rehabilitation centers in their area. Once they were found they could not survive, that's when they come to live with us and we give them their permanent home. Angel was found in Wisconsin by an avian ecologist named Pat Manthe. Pat Manthe is actually an ecologist who was studying uh, uh, herons at the time. And as she was walking through Wisconsin, she came across an injured juvenile bald eagle. And that turned out to be Angel. Angel suffered a very severe wing injury. What had actually happened to her was that when Angel was, of course, first hatched, she lived in a nest like this one. And so she was growing up. Uh, as these birds grow up, they have to grow up real fast. They don't get to hang out in their parents' nest until they're 18 years old or 30, you know, whichever one. Uh, so she is full grown at only 12 weeks old. Now this of course is not a photo of Angel. This is uh, a generic immature bald eagle, but this represents an eagle at 12 weeks. This is full grown. So once she was full grown, she likely was learning how to use her wings. She was flapping them. She may have been kind of branching and starting to fledge and she fell out, possibly got pushed out of that nest and she came tumbling down. Now, Bald eagle parents will continue to take care of their babies if they're on the ground, but unfortunately, Angel hurt her wing pretty severely. She actually suffered a really severe break in that right wing. And so her parents weren't gonna take care of her anymore. And so she dragged herself underneath a heron's nest where she was surviving off of fish scraps that we later learned she was there for about two to three weeks before Pat found her, picked her up, brought her to the Raptor Center at the University of Minnesota. Now, that sounds like a pretty incredible story, but there's even more to it. Angel is a very, very lucky bald eagle because how bald eagles really kind of live their life is that they lay one to three eggs, usually on average, in those nests. And then they sit on them for about 35 days. They hatch into little poof ball eagles. And like I said, they have to grow up fast. So in just those few months, they are full grown. And at that point, parents say, you're on your own. You got to figure life out. And so they actually have to take off. And those eagles, like I said, they don't have that classic white head and tail. They kind of look like overgrown ravens at first. They're quite dark. And then as the years go by, they start to lighten up a bit but it's not until they reach the age of five to six years old that they get that white head and tail and that they are considered mature. But between that time of them hatching out of that egg and reaching maturity, getting that white head and tail, only 20% of them make it that far. 80% don't. And that's because Learning how to be a bald eagle is really hard. You have to learn to hunt for yourself, find your food, take care of yourself, and you do it all on your own. Because again, parents go off and you are nomadic. You gotta figure life out completely on your own. They are not social creatures. They don't hang out together. Whenever you see eagles out in the wild, kind of in groups and kettles, hanging out on lakes and whatnot, it's not because they like each other. It's just because they're trying to figure things out. And they always think that the other eagle knows something that they don't. And so it's a bit of a struggle and a hard life to get going, to get that white head and tail, to become mature, to reach adulthood. So Angel having that bad fall, breaking her wing when she was first learning how to fly, when she was only a few months old, that's something that happens. But thankfully she was found and she was brought to the Raptor Center at the University of Minnesota. Now, what had happened to Angel 
was that I have a replica of an eagle's wing right here. Don't worry, it's not a real one. But basically what it is, is that this shows the bone structure of their wing. Now I know this gets a little confusing because it doesn't have any feathers on it to see how it works. So I'm gonna use my arm as well. If this were my wing, these are my feathers, and it folds up, this is what it looks like. And so when it extends, this is my hand. This is the wrist, this is the elbow, and then way up here is her shoulder. What happened to Angel, she broke a very thick bone. She actually broke this bone right here. And so what happened when that broke was that it became a compound fracture. It, it broke completely in half. And obviously that made her wing very difficult to be able to fly or function or move. And I'm sure it was incredibly painful. The way that we know that Angel wasn't found for two to three weeks before she was found by Pat and brought to the Raptor Center at the University of Minnesota is because we can actually see in her x-rays the two sides of the bone trying to bridge and trying to heal together. And that takes time. So Angel amazingly beat all the odds after she was born and falling out of that nest, dragging herself under the heron's nest and surviving with no help, no reliance other than her own kind of skills until she was found and brought to the Raptor Center. She went through two surgeries in an attempt to save that wing. Now, unfortunately, they weren't able to repair it to the point where she could sustain flight. Obviously, being able to, to sustain flight to be able to find perching, build a nest, find food is incredibly important when you're a bald eagle. And if you can't accomplish that, you, you really can't get through life. And that is why Angel is considered to be permanently injured. Now don't worry, there's a really great side to this story because that also meant that she got to come to us at the National Eagle Center where she is a magnificent teacher for everyone who gets to meet her. And so when she came to the National Eagle Center, as I said, Angel was incredibly young. She was only a few months old. She was found July 14th, 1999 by Pat. She likely hatched out of that egg in late March or so. She was only a few months old. Then she came to the National Eagles and she really never learned anything to be an eagle. She didn't go flying off. She didn't catch food. So when she came to the National Eagle Center, she really didn't know how to be an eagle. But thankfully, there was another eagle in our care that she got to learn a lot from. And that was Harriet, our original ambassador for the National Eagle Center. And so Angel actually learned a lot from watching Harriet. Harriet was an adult when she was injured. So she lived 17 years out in the wild before she was hit by a car and permanently injured by uh, suffering a severe wing injury and actually having to have a partial wing amputation so she could not fly before she came to the National Eagle Center. But of course, Harriet knew everything that it was like to be an eagle. She had probably built a nest, probably raised chicks of her own. She, of course, had been hunting and doing all those things. Now, when they come to the National Eagle Center, they, of course, don't need to find or accomplish a lot of those things. We get them their food. We get them clean, non-diseased food. They don't have to worry about car accidents or competition or territory or anything else. But of course, you still need to do things to take care of yourself. And so Angel learned from watching Harriet. Some of the things that we would do at the National Eagle Center is, for instance, we would take our birds down to the Mississippi River for beach day. And Harriet loved to go out there and bathe in the river. Angel didn't really know how. And so from watching Harriet and seeing her bathe, Angel learned that it was a very safe and fun thing to do. And by doing that, it of course kept her wings and her feathers nice and clean. It helped keep her feet and even her talons in shape. And then another way that she learned from Harriet is that we like to get our birds lots of enrichment, lots of things to keep them busy, not only physically, but mentally as well. One of our favorites is minnows. So we actually get live minnows from a supplier in town and we put them into their tubs. And so our birds can kind of hunt for their own fish. Now, Angel was not sure about this. Remember, she had never gone hunting. And so watching Harriet go after these minnows in her tub and eating them made Angel realize that that was a food source and that she could catch them too. And now today, even though Harriet has passed on, even though Angel, of course, is 22 years later, still catching minnows in her tub is one of her absolute 
favorite form of enrichments. If you've ever seen one of them on maybe one of our adventures in Eagle territory, we love to do lots of different enrichment for our birds and that's always a crowd favorite as well as one of Angel's favorites too. Now, Harriet wasn't the only person that Angel learned from because she was no longer a wild bald eagle. So she had to learn how to also be an educator. So being at the National Eagle Center, we, we ask a lot of our birds. They're not only gonna educate people like you and myself, but they're also going to be an ambassador for their species. And that's a lot of responsibility. So she had to learn and kind of become comfortable in the new setting that she was thrown into. And that was where a very important person came in. That's where a wonderful gentleman called Al Cooper came in. Al Cooper was one of the original trainers of Angel, and he actually has a few words to say about her. Uh, yes, my name is Al Cooper. Um, I've been with the National Eagle Center since 1995, and going on 24 years. And I really love what I do as a volunteer for the National Eagle Center, and I like representing them very well, as much as I can anyways. We had a new arrival. Her name was Angel. And um, she was um, two years old. She was very young. I mean, she, I mean, she was um, came to us because she fell out of a nest, and somebody found her, a DNR agent found her out there on the base of the tree, and we ended up um, getting her after the raptor center did their evaluation and fixed her injuries and everything. And when she did come to the National Eagle Center, she was salt and pepper, very young, didn't have the colors of the white head and the white tail. Uh, so um, Angel and I, like I said, we've been together since day one. So during the time that Angel and I have been together, we have developed a special relationship. Angel has a very unique personality. Uh, and what I mean by that is she picks and chooses who she likes. <laughs> Sometimes she can be very vocal, and but she knows whether or not, if you're comfortable with her, then she knows to be comfortable. But if you show signs that you're not comfortable with her, she will pick that up. She reads body language and your personality very well. So if you're nervous, that's gonna make her nervous. If you're comfortable, she's gonna be comfortable. So she does pick up on a lot of behavior patterns that you or I would demonstrate. And I think that's one of the difference between myself and other handlers because I'm always calm and relaxed with her. I never um, hesitate to have any kind of form of hesitation. So she's always very relaxed and very comfortable. And she also recognizes my voice um, and when I'm, when I'm present because she always vocalizes. But um, I know that she does definitely have a very strong personality. And if you're not careful, she would demonstrate that in a negative way, um, like try to peck you, or maybe she might try to you know, put her talons where they don't belong. And again, that's because she's not comfortable. And th that's why it's important for the handlers to know that they got to be really calm, relaxed, because she's going to pick up on that behavior. And if you show your calm and relaxed, then she will be calm and relaxed. But she does pick and choose. She does have a very strong personality versus some of the other eagles that we have at the center. She's different. <laughs> okay. And one thing that we used to do too back in the day was powwows. And she also performed very well during the powwows because there was a very large audience a lot of noise, a lot of drum beating, um, and she was involved in doing a march. So you walk in with her and doing the powwows. So that was also a very nice and very good experience. We did indoors and outdoors powwows with her and she responded very well. But my favorite was taking her to the VA hospital to, to demonstrate, you know, to show her with the veterans and have the veterans be able to see her because that's what the veterans, you know, in our, the service, you know, you represent freedom and things of this nature. And the bald eagle has always been a very strong symbol for the military. So that that's was correct. Um, I served in the United States Air Force for several years, and it's always been a very opportunity for me to be able to share angel or bald eagle with another veteran because of the connection. So, that's um, 
Ants has always been my favorite bird. I mean, and I guess, you know, I mean, I love the other birds, so don't get me wrong. I love Columbia. I love Washaka. I love Latch. I love all of our birds that we have at the National Eagle Center. It's just that over my time and my years of being able to work with a bird from day one into the current time, it's always been very special because not everybody gets the opportunity to work with a bird on day one and still be able to work with her, you know, 24 years later, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, to me, that's always been a very special um, time and very um, special experience that I've been able to, um, to have. And not everyone has that experience with that longevity of working with one bird as much as I have and being able to do the things I can be able to do with her and have her trust. Um, and that's the part that um, is kind of hard to explain that I do have a special trust with her as she does with me. And she knows that um, I'm really not going to do anything that she's not going to like. And um, I think that means a lot the way that we interact with each other. And I miss her dearly and I love her very much. And then she will always be my baby, always be my special bird. And um, the, the, like I said, just a very special time, very special moment that I have personally. And to be able to have that connection with a bald eagle is very special by itself. So that was Al, and he had some very wonderful things to say about Angel and spoke a bit about his first interactions with her when he got to meet her and, of course, their wonderful relationship that they have today. I am very lucky being the avian care manager here for the National Eagle Center that I get to work with Angel every single day, and I can tell you that she has accomplished an enormous amount, not only for an eagle, for Angel, but for her entire species. Angel has actually had the opportunity to teach people really all over the world. And that's because she not only has been able to travel to different places, not just in Minnesota or Wisconsin, but really across the country to be able to reach people who can't always make it here to the National Eagle Center and to Wabasha, you know, ourselves, but she also is seen through virtual programs just like this one. Pretty much, you know, every day people are able to check in on her. They see her through all of our different offerings, including ones like this. And so they're able to make that connection with her uh, in different forms as well. She also, of course, gets to meet the smiling faces of every person that comes through the National Eagle Center doors in person. She makes those wonderful connections not only to educate people about her own species, about the fact that these eagles, while they have recovered, tremendously, uh, not only in Minnesota, but across the United States and really across North America. Uh, she also teaches them about the threats that are still after them today. And the fact that she is an eagle that has kind of beaten the odds of the fact that not only did she beat the odds of the fact that she is an adult, she is 22 years old today. She has that white head and tail. But something, too, is the fact that even when she went into rehabilitation, a lot of eagles aren't lucky enough to make it back out. Actually, only about 20% of raptors who go into uh, rehabilitation centers make it back out in some form. That's not even released back out into the wild. Those are also counting in individuals who come into human care just like us. And that's because of those severe injuries. Those x-rays that showed Angel's wing, hers broke pretty nicely, but a lot of times when their bones break, they shatter, and it makes it really difficult for them to be placed back together and heal correctly. Angel is a lucky one in the sense of she was able to have her wing kind of put back together in a way that works really well for her, even though unfortunately she wasn't able to get back out into the wild. But unfortunately, not everyone is so lucky as she is. But thankfully, she is able to be a wonderful educator so that you all can learn about these uh, eagles and what happens to them, uh, even if they're not able to come to a facility like the National Eagle Center. Now, Angel, as the years have gone by and we had to say goodbye to wonderful birds such as Harriet, Angel really kind of picked up the pace. So here at the National Eagle Center, we actually don't receive any money from the federal government or state to support us annually. We are 100% supported by people just like you who are coming through our doors or supporting us through our outreach, our programs, our virtual programs, 
just like this one. And Angel is a huge advocate for it. So when she went with us to the state capitol, she helped us raise that money. And she is a great advocate for us in everyday life, just being the one to help explain and show people where that money goes to and what that is for so that we can reach not only people like you, but we can help people all around the world to help understand the bald eagle, their struggle, their kind of fall through the years and also their gain, how they came back from the brink of extinction all the way up to 2007 when they came off the endangered species list and also when this building was very first built. We are hoping in the future to be able to give a home to much more ambassadors and be able to reach even more people across the world. And that really is thanks to ambassadors like Angel. She truly is one determined eagle and I hope you enjoyed this presentation for her. Thank you, everyone.